Flight Test. I'm Peter, and today we're gonna to take you through the build video for the FT Mighty Mini Corsair. So first things in order, go ahead and get your power pack, and if you guys are wondering which power pack you need to get, it's the Power Pack F, which is under store, or you can look at the Power Pack and then find similar motors and servos and ESCs and all that. So go ahead and build your power pod and get your servos all centered up, and let's get started. First thing we're gonna build in the kit is the, uh, the wing for the FT Mighty Mini Corsair. So to get started with the wing, we're gonna need to punch out these pieces. We have the wing panels themselves, the foam spars, and the jigs to build them. All right, so first things first, we're gonna need to attach these wing halves together. So to do that, I'm gonna flip them over. I'm gonna take this and just kinda tuck it under there ever so slightly, and get some tape and just tape it down. Now when I apply tape, I usually go from one side to the other, trying to avoid wrinkles, because I just don't like them. They're just not as pretty. So do this, I slowly work my way down. Apply the tape. And then I get to the top. It also helps if you take like something kind of like a stick or whatever and rub the tape down just to make sure it stays down real well. It's important too, because this, this wing, since it has so many bends, needs to be really strong and stiff. All right, so once that's done, we're gonna go flip it back over. Go ahead and remove the ex excesses amounts of tape. Trim that off. So once you guys got the wing halves taped together, we're gonna go ahead and Open this side and do their double bevels, which is the uh, Beyond 45s on each side. I'll show you what those look like in a second. But to do this, what I like to do is just score it ever so slightly first. Now when I'm doing this, do not press very hard and don't press all the way through. What we're doing is simply just opening up this cavity to make this very easy to bend. Now you guys can see, I can just do this and it cracks open. You can see it's not cut all the way through. Fold that down. We'll go ahead and start on this end. You could really start on either end. Take your knife, or if you guys are uncomfortable with a knife, you can get a sanding block and just sand this down if you're uncomfortable at all doing this. Because this is kind of dangerous and you want to be mindful of your fingers at all times when doing this. So to do this, I'm going to start by holding the blade at a very shallow angle and slowly just pull through it. And also, I can't stress this enough, keep track of where your fingers are and your surroundings too. You don't want to cut anyone or slip in slice the knife through something you don't want to slice it through. There you go. Now we're gonna do the same for the other side. So to do this, since the fold starts over here, I'm just gonna take this, wash my hands, and just nick it so slightly, and then push the blade through. And sometimes it helps if you come this way too, but if I come this way, I wanna be careful of my fingers. And then I can finish it off going the other way. There, fold this guy over and cut this as well. Now it's okay if you do cut the paper out. If you do make a mistake, I'm just gonna go and make a mistake just to show you what it looks like if you do cut too deep. So right now I'm gonna cut a little too deep. You see I'm going through the paper on the other side. And I'll continue on the cut and finish it. So if you did make a mistake like this, you see how you kind of cut all the way through? All you should do is you take a piece of tape and put it over that. That's all you do. Then you can just fold it over. All right, so once we're all done with this, we're gonna open up our next gaps, which is these guys right here. To open them up, you're simply just going to grab a barbecue skewer and move it through the groove. And once you've gone ahead and opened up this groove, we're gonna move it to the table edge and just go ahead and just uh, go ahead and do a pre-crease. So I find a sharp table edge and just kind of roll it over so lightly. The reason why I'm doing this is it makes it a lot easier to fold this over and then glue it without having too many uh, problems when you're pushing it. Just pre tensions the foam. I'm gonna do the same thing this side. Just curl it down a little bit. And that's how you do that. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna glue the spars in, which are these guys right here. You notice there are two different lengths and there's four of them. The two shorter sections go on the inside right here, and the two longer ones go on the outside. So do that, simply just go ahead and glue them in. Now when you glue it, make sure you get this edge lined up with this just about right to the edge. You don't want it too far or too out, or too far out. Just, just right up to the edge. Now once these guys are dry, 
So somebody's gonna take, or we're gonna take this over here, roll it over one more time, just get a good feel for the thing and how it's gonna lay down, and do the same with the other ends. Feels pretty good. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna go and glue the center section in, which is this guy over here. Now, if you guys are wondering about this right here, we're not gonna put glue in that at all. We're gonna leave that alone right now because that's where we're gonna do our bend. So that's why I have not put any glue in there yet. So to do this, we're gonna take some glue, put on this bar right here, and then put it on the trailing edge of this section right here. Take both sides and fold them over. Now when you do this, you can actually twist this a little bit too, but try to try not to do that and try to just line up with this edge right here where you can see the seam on both sides and simply just hold it down. Okay, and for the next step, we're gonna go and fold the outer panels in. Now before you do this, go ahead and roll over just one more time just to look at this. And now if you look, when you fold it over, there's a little bit of a gap here and that's okay. You want that little bit of a gap because when this side curls up, it's gonna try to push this side into the aileron portion of the wing. We don't want that. So the gap's fine. Now if you guys notice, I'm not putting any glue on the leading edge of the wing. I just don't really find it necessary for a model this small and I'm trying to avoid as much weight as possible in such a tiny airplane. Because the lighter they are, the easier they are to fly and the better they are to fly. Glue on this bar, glue on the trailing edge, fold that down, and just hold it there. Now make sure you give it plenty of time to dry. If you don't, don't rush this step, you'll probably regret it if you do. All right, and once you're done with that, go and do the same to the other side. Get some on the spar, and then some on the trailing edge. And fold it over. All right, so once you're done with the primary assembly of the wing, you're gonna get something that looks like this. Now to start our next step, we're gonna actually take where we tape the top of this and we're gonna cut this open. And then a wing should do something like this. Just fall open. So for the next step, we need to assemble our jigs. So to do this, we're gonna take this guy right here and just slide this foam triangle in there. And go and do the same for the other uh, wing tip jig things. All right, so once we're done with that, you're gonna need to take our barbecue skewer or paint stick and cut off a little bit about it. You just need about one inch of this. Close enough. Okay, so for the next step, I need you guys to not rush this. This can be a fairly tricky step. And also, be aware since this is tape, hot glue can melt tape to some degree. It won't melt it all the way, but it will slowly make it soft and easy to work around. So for this step, you need to take your hot glue gun and take your uh, popsicle stick and any scrap foam you got, and I'll show you what to do. So first things first, we're gonna put glue right here on the bottom edge of the wing, just enough. Get it on the trailing edge or the top part of it. And here, get some on the spar, get some down there. It looks like kind of like a mess. And also mind your fingers too, because hot glue is really, really hot. And get some glue on the other side as well. It's kind of a lot of glue, but at least just to get the bend right. Now be careful with this. You're gonna take your popsicle stick that you snipped off and rest it in there and fold this gap over and it's gonna sandwich in there just like that. Now you're gonna put this on top of your wing jig which is that little, this guy right here. Slide it under and then go and press down. But when you press down you're gonna hold onto the tips right here and let this center part define its own shape. All right, once you're done with this you're just gonna leave it there and you're gonna leave it there for a good, good amount of time too. And also if, if you got some time if you feel like you can just kind of just shove some scrap foam in there I just do it just as filler. It's not super necessary, but I think it just makes it a little bit nicer. All right, so once that's done, we're gonna go and just let go of it. You can kind of see it's still just spring up to shape, but the center section is kind of stuck now in its uh, anhedral shape. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to do these guys. We're gonna do one side at a time, so you're just gonna open it, and then we're gonna glue it. Now, be very careful with this stage, because right now, you see this, this part right here? This is where we're gonna try to fish the server wire through, so we're gonna try to keep as much glue away from this area as possible. So to do this, we're gonna go and put plenty of glue over here on the leading edge of the wing, and inside the spar, on the bottom, but slowly put the glue back over here. Just try not to overdo it on the glue, because if you overdo it on the glue, it's gonna be really, really hard to fish the server wire through. And simply just put it down on this jig. You want your center section wing jig, wing jig and then you wanna use this little guy right here. The little guy goes up to the first ridge on this front part of the wing. You're gonna put it like that. And then you're gonna take some scrap foam and just smear off the excess glue that comes out of the uh, crack. Now go ahead and just uh, let it wait and let it dry because this actually will take quite a while too. 
because there's plenty of glue in there and it's kind of hot. So it's gonna take a good, good time to cool. So once it's done, you're gonna get one side that looks like this, and then you're gonna go and repeat the process on the other side too, just the exact same way. So once you guys are done with that, your wing should be pretty much complete, and we're just gonna go ahead and install the servos last. So you can see it's pretty stiff. It actually held okay too. It looks kind of mm, sketchy, I don't know, maybe bendable, but for the size of a model with the uh, power setup, I have yet to fold the wings, even on a full speed dive and then yanking right up on the elevator. It has not folded yet. So to install the servos, you're gonna flip it over, and we're gonna lightly open up this side of the uh, aileron again. Now, be, no, take note, I'm not pushing all the way through, I'm just very, very lightly pushing my knife into this. Just open up the gap, make it easy to fold over. All right, and now we're gonna bevel it. So now since this is such a short aileron, you need to be very careful where your fingers are because we're gonna bevel on this side, clicking this way. So to do this, I'm gonna put my finger over here, watch where my actual hand is, and bring the knife in this way. Move my finger over here, put the knife facing the other way, and then finish off the bevel. And there's your other one. So go and do the same thing on the other side. So once your ailerons are cut out, we're gonna now cut out our servo pockets for these servos. If you, see, if you see on the plans, you'll see these little holes right here, and if you get the kit, it's these little laser holes. You can simply just take your knife and just cut through the skin, and cut these pockets out. The reason I didn't cut these out one for the build is to make it sturdier and easier to build. So it's easy to cut them out afterwards when you're done. Go and do the same thing for the other side. So the next step is to install your servos. So if you guys haven't already, go ahead and install your servos and center them. For this step, I like to actually use the linkage stoppers. And for the hole on the servo I use, I go to the most innermost hole. For the least amount of throw, but the highest resolution. So for this, we're gonna need two of the mirroring servos. So it looks like that. One in this direction and one in that direction. All right, so for this side, you're gonna pick your servo, which one it is. It's gonna be this guy on that side and this one on that side. Now we're gonna need to remove the ears or cut pockets for them. For this, I just like to just go and break off the ears and just stick them in. So to do this, I just bend this back and forth a couple times. You can either use a knife, a bandsaw, or just cut it off. But for this, I can just wiggle it back and forth and break it off. Take your servo, turn your wing around, now for this step, since this is actually a kind of like a weird bend dip thing, this is why I was making a very good emphasis on not over gluing the crack. We're gonna slide this guy up in there. To do this, you're gonna take your push rod wire, take the servo, take this guy and slide it into the middle section about right there on the positive side. And now you can actually kind of just push this through there. So do this, just line up down there. Get centered. I'm gonna take a couple tries to get up in there. push it to the top, and then it'll come up through there. So go and do the same for the other side. So once you guys have got those through, you're just gonna pull the rest of the excess wire out, and glue the servos down. Once you've glued it down, go and repeat the same process on the other side. So once you guys are all done with that, the last step is to install the control horns which are these guys right here. So do this, simply just take it in this cavity cut out and just press it down. That's all there is to it. Go and pull them back out for now. We're not gonna glue them in just yet. We're gonna take our uh, push rod wire. We're gonna look about where it stops over here and we're gonna cut the excess off just about a half an inch above. This stuff's still really, really easy since we're using linkage stoppers. So do this, go ahead and slide the wire in like that. Go ahead and make your screw, your, take your screw out on the linkage stopper, or just do your screw, you don't take it all the way out. The one on this one is just missing. Slide it through. Take a drop of hot glue and put it in the hole. And then stick the control horn down in there. Now all you use uh, is power the servo back up, make sure it's centered, and just tighten down the screw right here and lock the servo into the position where the control surface is now centered. Now you can do the same thing for the other side. All right, so that's pretty much how you assemble the wing. Now after the assembly of the wing, we're gonna move on to the fuselage. So now we're gonna start with the fuselage and you should get something that looks like this when we're all done with it. So this, you're gonna need these components right here, the fuselage itself, the bottom plate, the power pod, motor mount pod thingy, and the fuselage formers. 
So first things first, we're gonna go and open up all of our score cuts. Now when you do this, just use a very light amount of pressure. We're not trying to cut through the foam, we're just trying to open up this gap just to make it easy to pull this piece out. Be careful when you're doing this and take your time and watch your fingers too. And also, you can also knock out these pieces too, or cut them out if you get them in the kit. So once it's done and you remove the cavities here, we're just going to buckle these little ends in right here and go and assemble the fuselage. Now for this, it's a B fold, which means beside. So you can kind of see this is kind of like a, a cross section. You can see this piece right here is actually going to be this guy right here. So it's going to fold down into that crack. So if you're thinking, you're going to look, for, look at it from the front like this and it's going to be like beside. So B beside is going to fold down like that. I'm not going to press it all the way in right now because I, I need to slowly work it in there. but. For doing this, you're gonna need to come to the table edge and keep this part over the table edge because this part actually goes further down. So we're just gonna roll it over like that, just kind of checking it out. Actually, it's better to do this over a hard surface right here. So once you're happy with that and it looks pretty good, we're gonna go and actually put some glue in there. You can glue just one side at a time if you wanna be extra careful about this. Move it back to the table edge. Mind where the uh, edge of the table is and where that little uh, rear part of the fuselage is. Fold it over, get something about 90 degrees or so just to make sure this is very square and hold up to the surface and let it dry completely or cool off, I should say. Once you're happy with that, do the same thing to the other side. So once that's done, it should look like this. And we're going to take our bottom plate and bevel out the insides and insert the plate into the fuselage. So we're gonna do the same thing again. We're just opening up the crevice with the knife just to make it really easy to pull out that little foam piece. And pop it out. Now we're gonna take this guy over here, put it around our table edge. Just this flat part, right, you can see right here, is over that ridge. Just go and try to fit this piece, slide all the way up to the tail, and let it sit. Once you're happy with the fit, we're gonna put some glue on it and stick it right in. Now for this part, you could help if you also roll over the, the, the fuselage too and use the table as your as a buffer to kind of hold everything into shape. Now you can see it looks like that. So the next step is to go install the uh, power pod firewall motor mount thingy. It's another B fold, so we're just gonna open this up. I'm gonna put some glue in the cracks. Fold it over. It also helps too if you get your 90 degree jig thing again and just butt it up to the surface. Make sure it's nice and straight. Also this part too, be mindful of getting too much glue inside the, uh, the pod. We need to insert our power pod in this so I'm going to smear off as much as possible. Making sure there's no extra glue in there that can cause interference when I'm trying to put the power pod in. As you can see it looks like that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to insert this into this. To do this easily, you're gonna take this guy right here and kind of crimp this a little bit so it fits in the gaps. Just lightly crush it with your fingers. So I'm just gonna glue it. Put some in the inside, not too much, just enough. Put glue there, put glue there. Just a little bit back here. We're gonna take this, go back to our table edge. Let's slip this guy in there. Let's get something like that. Now what you can do with these, since these are kind of like out here, you can kind of take your hot glue gun, put a dot on the inside of the fuselage, and a dot right there, and spread these guys apart over here, and lock them to the side walls of the fuselage. All right, for the next step, we're gonna install our formers. There should be five of them that you have. You have this guy with the holes here. This one's gonna go back here. You got this kind of like higher one than these two. You can kind of see there. That one's gonna go right here. And these two same ones, they're gonna go right there in the front. Hang on. It helps you crush these down a little bit too, just so they kind of slide right in. 
And this little guy right here is gonna go in the bottom. And this guy right there, just like that. So go ahead and glue them all down. All right, and that's the first part of the fuselage assembly. All right, so this step, we're gonna attach our fuselage to the wing. So if you notice, these are the little knockouts right here, or not knockouts, these little grooves. We're gonna crush these a little bit so they fit in the slots easily. And then we're gonna trial fit it on our fuselage. Just get something that looks like about like that. All right, so once you're happy with the trial fit, you're just somebody's gonna pull this guy off, take your hot glue, put a little bit in the crack right here, on the other side too. Now for this step too, you're also gonna make sure your server wires kind of stay out of the way, so you can kind of push them back into the little cracks. Take a fuselage and simply just insert it. I can do so at the table, but also use a light amount of pressure kind of supporting both sides. Kind of like pressing this down. Not over overbearingly trying to crush it or reestablish a new dihedral line, but just enough just to make sure it bonds really well to the surface. So now, once you're done with the uh, tail section, or the uh, fuselage and the wing section and glue them together, you should get something that looks like this. So for this next step, we're gonna set our fuselage aside and get ready to assemble our tail section. So for this step, we're gonna assemble the tail section, which consists of our horizontal and vertical stabilizer, and the bottom poster board piece for the fuselage. We're gonna need a little bit of poster board. You're gonna need this weird looking guy right here. You need your elevator, vertical or horizontal stabilizer, and your vertical stabilizer slash rudder thing. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and just go and uh, open up these core cuts. Open like this, and just go and bevel them. Now for this step, also, you know, once again, mind your fingers, I'm kind of using the knife away from me. Just kind of starting somewhere over here in this vicinity. Cutting all the way to the end. Stopping right there. Taking my knife and just nicking this piece out. Flipping it back over and finishing off the bevel. Now, one last step, we're also gonna do our uh, Haku uh, hinge line thingy. This just makes us, uh, keeps this surface much stiffer and less likely to delaminate. So do this, put a little bit of glue there, and you just simply smear most of it off. You just kind of smear it down to the cracks. This keeps the paper from, you know, peeling off and stuff. All right, now once you're done with this, simply just leave it alone, let it set, and let it cool down. Now we come to our rudder. Bevel it right here. First, I'm gonna open up the score cut. Pop it down. Take the knife, watch my hands, and simply just cut into it. It helps too if you do a little bit of like a sawing action in case you're running to a lot of friction. Just use the blade and just kind of like slice it. Go ahead and do the hot glue hinge on this surface too. And leave it alone to let, let it dry off and cool. Now we're gonna take our rudder horizontal stabilizer and take out this little pocket piece right here. Take this guy and simply just slide it up in there. Now if you notice there's three notches right there, this one just goes right in the center. And this guy comes down like that. So for this next step, we're gonna get a small amount of tape and we're actually gonna just tape this down there. Do the same for the other side. And you're done with that. Now the next step is to go ahead and line this. It should be fairly well lined because it's such a small part to the tail section. You can kind of see it's just a little off. I'm just gonna move it right to the center. So make sure my control surfaces move real well and easy. That goes up and down. That moves okay. And then we're gonna simply just take some glue and glue it on the side. Make sure you use a small amount of glue and not too much at all. And when you're done with that, take a piece of scrap foam and just smear it down. You're gonna wanna make sure you use just the right amount of glue and not too much, because uh, this is all behind the center of gravity. And if you guys know anything about airplanes, is that a tail heavy airplane is always never fun to fly. And chances are they don't fly very good at all. 
So we're gonna try to reduce the amount of weight we put in the back of this airplane. All right, so once you're done with this, we're gonna grab our fuselage, flip this guy over, and you see this pocket right here? We're actually gonna finish this cut out to here. The reason why this was left in here is to make it really easy to assemble. So when you're using pressure and stuff, it's less likely to break and buckle. Flip that guy over, take this guy over and slide it right in. It may take a little little bit to get right because this because this notch right here is a little bit higher, so you may need to roll it around a little bit. And slide it in. Now, when you're doing this, you want to make sure you don't glue the tail with incidents up or down. So what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna purposely slide it up. You kind of see how this gap right here, and this is not right up to the bottom. I'm gonna roll this down a little bit until this is just flush. This may get bent a little bit depending on how you build this or if it's scratch built or kit built. But sometimes they just come just a little bit off, but don't worry about it too much. Just really make sure this guy is lined up with this surface. So once that's completely flat, we're gonna eyeball it from the front too and just double check, it's a little crooked. So I'm just gonna take this and just turn it down and hold it to where it just looks just about right. Once you're satisfied with that, take your glue gun and put some glue there and put some glue there. Take a piece of scrap foam and smear off the excess glue. Now we're also gonna put a glue on this uh, little dorsal thing down here. And also, if you feel like, you can also put some glue right up in here. Now the next step for now, for this uh, part of the tail assembly, is we're gonna install the poster board. You're gonna want this guy right here with the two funny looking pieces and a little weird cut right here. Now poster board is always inside kind of iffy for me. I didn't really like this stuff in the beginning because it was kind of hard to work with and it's honestly not very fun. But after working, after building like 10 of these things, it's become a lot easier and I found some new techniques to making poster board, at least for me, easier to work with. One thing I like to do is go to a sharp uh, table edge like this and simply just roll this guy over a couple times. So the reason why I'm doing this is I'm kind of like putting tension on the poster board and pre-curling it so it holds the shape. So it's much, much easier to work with. So I'm not fighting it when it's on the airplane. This will make your life a lot easier when you're building this thing. Once you're done, you should get something that looks like about like this. You can kind of see it naturally is already holding a curve. And for this step, you also want to get a pencil too. All right, so for this step, you're gonna flip the plane over. You're gonna find out where these little weird cutouts are right there. That's actually for your, uh, the trailing edge of the wing to kind of slip under. You slip that guy up over there. Kind of nudge it in there. And you get something that looks like about like that. Now what you're gonna start to do is work this guy down before you glue anything in. So take your time with this, because this can be a fairly frustrating step for those of you that are new to poster board. Slowly work the tail down too. I'm just gonna try outfit everything first, but we're gonna take, these, take this slow and steady in one part at a time. So first things first, I'm gonna glue the tail section down, or the uh, trailing edge section down. If you notice, there's also these little dots I made on the kit too. This is just a little bit of an indicator to keep you lined up on both sides as a reference point. So I'm just gonna kinda line both the dots up. They may go above that or below that. You kinda see it covers it up. That's okay. You don't, 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 uh, don't rely too much on the dots. They're not a super essential thing. They're just something just to help you a little bit in case you're eyeballing. So once this is nice and tight and up to this former right there, I'm gonna take my pencil and make a light line right there. I'll do the same on the other side. I'm gonna remove the poster board and put glue on just one side, just about where I started. Let that slip in and go ahead and glue the other side down too. Now it's very careful when you're doing stuff to be, be mindful of your fingers because hot glue is indeed hot. So once you guys have glued this guy down, we're gonna go ahead and work our way back on the tail assembly. So I've kind of curled it up a little bit more. I'm kind of like eyeballing the center right here where this guy is, kind of holding that poster board up in there. Now I'm taking a pencil again, draw a line to the bottom. I'm actually just not gonna draw a line there, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna glue this side first. So use a very small amount of hot glue. Go from the back to the front. Just 
poster board over. Now be careful of your fingers too, because hot glue is indeed hot, and we are dealing with poster board and glue everywhere. So if you do have a little bit of glue that oozes out, just take your um, scrap foam and just smear it down. Now onto the other side. So now we're just going to take this and roll it up as tight as possible. Kind of hold it there. Take your pencil and draw another line. Go and do the same thing and put some glue on it. And that's how you still assemble the bottom half of the fuselage from this side. For this step, we're gonna install our servos, the turtle deck uh, top fuselage cover, and the control rods and control horns. We're gonna need our fuselage, we're gonna need this top turtle deck part, and two of our servos, and your push rods too. So, once we get all this stuff, we're, we're gonna start off with the poster board. Now, if you notice, there's actually a different cutouts here. There's like a weird, like, shallow angle and a, like a higher angle. Now, this part, we need to pick out the top and the bottom of the poster board. This is going to be the top. This side right here that's kind of more canted inwards is actually controlling the rudder. That's going to be a rudder cutout. And the shallower end over here is the elevator cutout on this side. So once you've got the top part figured out, so we're going to actually just going to pre-curl this. Just go to do the same thing on the table edge like I showed you. So once you guys have pre-rolled it and pre-curled it, you should get something that looks about like this kind of holds this nice radius on its own. We're gonna go and take it and simply just slip it in. So with this cut out here, this goes out in that little knockout right there on the uh, vertical stabilizer. Should slide right in. Now take your time with this. Here's somebody who's gonna pull this guy down Kind of hold it into shape as best as you can. This is where you're gonna have to flip flop back and forward. Like look where this edge ends up and look at that side and look at this side right here and look right there and just try to line up as best as possible. This is not like super precision -y rocket science. I mean, anything you do will pretty much be fine. It's just a little bit more of a, I don't know, like a nitpicky thing if you're picky about that sort of stuff. So once you're happy with the fit and finish, kind of take references to where your points are. I kind of like to pinch it about right here and keep the shape with this former up here. Hold it nice and tight. Take your pencil and make a quick mark over here and a quick mark over here at just the bottom. I'm not gonna worry about too much about the back yet. So once you're holding this right here, and that looks good, kind of work your way back here and just kind of take note to where that is. And if you got a free hand, let go of the front and make a small mark back here a small mark back here. Luckily it's already kind of lining up with this bottom uh, sheeting I already put in place. So I really don't need to worry about the pencil marks too much. But your builds may vary because some, some races are tighter than others. So it may be a little tricky to do. All right, so once you're happy with that, we're gonna go glue one side. So to do this, I'm just gonna lift that up. Put my glue gun right there. Draw a bead. And stop over there. Press this down and smear any excess glue off with this, with this uh, spare piece of foam. Once you're done with that side, you're gonna look at a reference marks again. Just go ahead and pull this over to make sure everything still fits right. And do the uh, glue trick thing again. Go ahead and fold it over. Slowly work your way down and be careful because the hot glue is indeed hot. And you should get something looks like that. Now, last thing to do is just put some glue up here. Smear that glue down. 
and you should have something like that. Next thing you do is install the servos. Just take these guys, they should be a mirror image once again. Go ahead and center them up and install your screws. I have yet to do mine, but I'll put the screws in a second. And just slide them on in. Gonna take a hot, some hot glue. I just kinda leave them under these little servo ears and just put the glue under there. Do the same for the front. And just plop them back down. That's all there is to it. Okay, for the next step, this is gonna be the trickiest step. For a lot of you guys, so be very patient with this because we're actually gonna fish this rod through this crack and out through these little holes right here. So this will take a little bit of patience and quite a bit of time. First things first, take these control horns and we're gonna slide them into place. So you've noticed on this side of the rudder with this slot, we're gonna press it in. Take this other side and pop it down in the elevator spot. Now next step is to take a rod, kind of line up about how far you need it. You can see right here that if I were to slide this in, it would just come out about right here. So to do that, I'm just gonna take this and cut up about an inch beyond where the servo linkage would stop. And do the same for the elevator. So you get two rods look like that. Now we're gonna take them all out. You can even take the horns out too, they're not necessary right now. Keep in mind which side you put on where. And then you should get two rods that look like this, a shorter one for your uh, rudder linkage and a longer one for your elevator push rod. So here comes the next step that's can take a little bit of time. You're gonna flip this over here. You're gonna actually sight down the fuselage. You can kind of, if you move around, see where those holes are and slide the rod in. This can actually be a little bit tricky and this can take some time. So just take your time and be patient. Eventually you can get them in there. Once you're done with one linkage, I like to take the screwdriver and just tighten this down a little bit. Just You can even just do it with your hand just to lock it in place. So once the rudder's done, we're gonna get to the elevator side. It also helps too if you take the rod, because the holes aren't always lined up as straight, you can just bend them up just a touch. So you can have just a little natural bend in it. So now I'm gonna take this and just kind of find out where that hole is. It also helps too, you can also even look through the other side find out where that hole is. And it comes up to the top. Once that's in, I just go and pinch it down just a little bit. And that's pretty much how you do that. All right, for the next step, we're gonna install the control horns to finalize the uh, servo installation. I'm gonna go ahead and really just undo these as a touch, just unscrew them ever so slightly, and then work this guy in there. Go ahead and make sure these are centered once again. You can use your server tester or you can just center them later. It's best to do it all now though because we're gonna kind of seal this hatch up. So it can be, maintenance can be just a little bit difficult over there. Pop that down into place. For the next step, we're gonna go to finalize the installation completely. Since this is now glued in, we're gonna just go and undo this right here and just go and line it right up. Make sure your is nice and centered and just crank it back down. Now you want to make sure this is actually really tight too, because if this comes off in flight, you're going to crash. It helps if you use Loctite or something too, but I find it's not super essential right now for such a small model. Go ahead and repeat the process for their side and do the exact same thing. All right, so this is pretty much what it looks like when you're done with the servo installation and the uh, hatch cover and your control horns are installed. For this step, we're gonna do the canopy cover and we're gonna do the fuselage cover as well and the battery hatch door installation. All right, for the canopy and the fuselage battery hatch cover thing, we're gonna need these pieces right here, this guy and this guy. So the first things first, we're gonna figure out which is the top and the bottom. It's not super important for this side because you can really put the hatch on either the left or the right side. I'm just going to put it facing the right side of the airplane. So first things first, we're going to do the same thing. We'll just curl it over a couple times. 
So once you got this guy right here, it should be kind of curled and holding its position. Somebody's just gonna slap it on top, just like that. Now we're actually gonna align the front of this guy right here, with the very front of the fuselage right here. You can kind of see it right there. So you're gonna look at something like this. That's where it stops. And the rest of it should just fall into place. So the next thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to compare sides right here. You kind of see the height here and the height here. We're a little too far on this side downwards, so we're gonna need to roll it up. So once we're happy with that, we're gonna kind of hold down as tight as possible and take our pencil and mark it. We're also gonna mark the top two here. Now do the same thing for the other side. Mark the side. And then take it off. So go ahead and pick a side. You can do either left or right first. I'm just gonna do this side, the right side. Put a small amount of glue there. And some glue up this way. Take the fuselage cover. And roll it down on there. Alright, once the side's dried, we can do the same thing with the other side. We're gonna just roll the side off a little bit, put a little bit of glue up here, and go down this way. Roll that guy over there. And glue it on down. You should get something that looks like that. Now the next step is to go and open up the hatch. So you can kind of see this is kind of this little little divot here and a little line here and here, but no finish line. So wash your fingers with this. Just take your knife and just slowly go over here once, go over there twice, and a third time. And chances are you probably cut through right now. Do the same over here. And that's how pretty much I open up the hatch. Now when I open this up, I kind of like to support it right here and just try to crease this a little bit with my finger. Just kind of open that up. And that's how you have access to your stuff. Now we're going to move on to the canopy first and then I'll show you how to install the battery to make everything fit right. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to form the canopy. So to do this, I kind of like just to curl a little bit. Just kind of do a little bit of rolling around there. It doesn't really matter which side you use, top or bottom, you can use either or. Grab some tape. Put some tape there. Pull this guy over there. Get some more tape and do the same to the other side. Get this side as well. Now we're just gonna keep taping this thing till we're all the way through. This kind of part up here kind of rolls over like this. So you're gonna need to pre-stress it just a little bit. Kind of roll the tape up to the top. And you should get something looks like that. Before we attach the canopy, I guess you can probably be painting ahead of time or whatever, but since it's just the model that we're building for the um, build video, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. So I'm just gonna rest it on the top. And I'm gonna figure out how far I should glue it because otherwise you can just do this and roll it all over the place. So figure out where the center is. I'm looking at it. And then also on the side, you want it to kind of finish about right there. Kind of like where that top of that ridge is. Take your pencil. Right there and then mark the side. You can mark on this side as well. Now you have your choice here too. You can either just glue the canopy down or you can just put some tape on it. I prefer to tape it even though it looks a little bit uglier, mainly because the reason why is I can just cut more of this out and then have access to the servos in case I need to adjust something. So you can easily do that. So I'll just go ahead and tape it down. And that's how you attach the canopy. 
Now the last step for this uh, compartment slash cover canopy hatch is to figure out the battery installation. So for this, um, most of you guys should probably run around like a 650 milliamp 3S battery or up to an 800. We sell an 800 that barely fits in here. So I'll show you how to install the skewer and the tie down with the uh, 800 milliamp battery. So for about the balance with this thing with the 800 milliamp 3S, it's kind of a little bit of a fat pack, but it still fits in there just about right. So for that, I kind of push down like that and it kind of barely squeezes up to that spot right there. So you're gonna need your barbecue skewer for this. It's actually not very sharp, so I'm gonna sharpen it just a little bit more. Just gonna whittle it down, just for a nice poking action. That's nice and sharp. I'm gonna come over to this edge right here. You can kind of see up to the light where the edge of this is, and you can kind of see where this is too. I'm gonna poke a hole through that. It's right up to the top almost too. That hole is supposed to come out through about right here. Be very slow when you're doing this too because you really don't want to poke a hole in your battery because that could be very, very bad. So once I got this down, you can kind of notice it's actually really tight too with this battery, but it can still make it work. So I'm just gonna go to the other side, and slowly come out. This also acts as a battery strap too, so you really, need, you really don't even need, need any Velcro or anything like that because it's stuck in there. So I'm gonna work the stick back out. I'm gonna hold the hatch closed and slowly push the stick out again. Just watching, being, being mindful where my fingers are. I'm doing it very slowly because I really don't feel like stabbing myself. Once you're done, you just cut the excess off. And basically it acts as the battery, you just pull the stick out. Yeah, I'm gonna need a little bit of push. It's a little tight right now. You pull it out. And to read the battery, you just pull the stick out. And there you have it. So that's pretty much happens when you finish the uh, canopy cover, the uh, fuselage hatch cover with the battery door. So now uh, we're gonna move on to the step where we install the cowling and the motor power pod assembly. For this step, we're gonna need a power pod and we're simply just gonna push the wires in here and clean up a little bit and slide it through. And for this, it's actually a really tight fit, but you're just gonna slide it right in there. Right about to about right here, just to where the lip of the motor stops. All right, for the next step, we're gonna install the little cowling holder things. You'll notice it has these little kind of holes right here and you're gonna need this piece right here. Okay, there's two of these. These are gonna be, uh, I think a C folds, but Josh refers these as too. But basically you remove out the center section and fold it over like that. Once you're done gluing those, you should get some of those like this. Now we're gonna take the airplane, where these holes are, and just put some glue right in the middle of that. These holes are diagonally across, you just kind of just press the block in like that. That's all there is to it. And do the same on the other side. And you're done with that step of the installation. So for the last thing to do with the power pod, we're gonna stick our screw in there and lock it into place. So I'm just gonna come from one side and slowly push my way through. Come out to here. And just cut off the excess of the stick. You get something like that. Now the last thing to do is simply just roll over the cowling and install it. Now for this part, it's gonna be, not, the cowling's not super well attached, mainly because the cowling is a sacrificial piece. Since this is nothing but a pure belly lander, you can install landing gear, similar to Josh's P51 that he has. But I let them off for now because this, this is just really more fun to fly without landing gear, especially because of its size. It's just a really fun, easy to fly, sort of easy to fly Warbird that really get it going fast. So before we do this, you're gonna to wanna to take your uh, cowling piece thing, if you have plans or the kit, and probably just make a few copies. I haven't really damaged it yet in most of my flying and crashes, but just in case you do damage it, it's really easy just to make a new one in five seconds and then put it on. So to do this, you're gonna take the piece and pull the paper off of one side. Go to the table edge, start working your way over. You can just roll it on, on the table too. And 
and you get something looks like this. So to finish this off, you can actually just tape it. I don't even bother gluing it because it holds the shape so well. So tape there, roll that over. And you're done. Trim off the back part with the excess tape. If you notice, the cowling is actually kind of like cupped inwards. So naturally the flatter outward tapered end is going to go towards the rear of the fuselage. The inward tapered end is going to go towards us. We're just going to slide on first, just trial fit it. It's actually a little bit fat, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to squish these side cheeks a little bit until we form the cowling to where we want it. Looks pretty good. Now we're just, we're just gonna slide it back off. Put a dot of glue here and a dot of glue here. And slide the cowling back on. And notice I'm not using too much and I'm also keeping this ridge line facing the bottom just for aesthetics. Cause this will make it easy to change out and, and just break off if we do damage the cowling in a rough landing or hard crash. So once we're done with the basic assembly of the airplane, it's now time to install the electronics, which is our receiver, our batteries, and also check our balance point on the airplane and see where it uh, balances. So let's go ahead and get started. Basically, you guys will have a receiver and a whole bunch of wires and doodads floating all over the place. But for this, you can either do flapperons. I've never really done flapperons on this airplane because, well, it's a small sport airplane. So most of us are gonna use a wire harness. If you can, get a smaller one because this wire harness is huge for this airplane. But it's what comes in the kit and we'll use it. So plug it into the two uh, aileron servos. It doesn't matter what order you do this in either because the aileron servos are mirrors of each other. I'm actually gonna slide this back into the wing, trying to save some space as much as possible. Now for that, we're using the grapner, so that's gonna go into slot two. Your radio, will, your radio will vary too, depending on how your channel mapping is set up. Now we have our ailerons, or our rudder and elevator. We'll plug those guys in. And then you can just neatly tuck all the stuff as best as possible into the back half of the fuselage. Now also with your antenna too, if you have one, kind of route it as best as you can away from the uh, battery stuff. It's better up if it's up high or just facing completely down vertical like that. Now, for keep in mind, when, with the Spectrum stuff or the 2.4 gigahertz stuff, usually the antenna is just the last couple of inches, so this part here is the actual antenna part. The rest of it is just shielded cable. So my antenna is facing out this way. Cool. That's pretty much how you install the receiver. So once you got the propeller on and everything, we're actually going to check for our center of gravity, which is our balance point. It'll determine how well our plane flies or how horrible it flies. So for the center of gravity, it's about 1.5 inches away from the leading edge of the wing, which is the front right here. You can go as far as back as 1.75 and have uh, sketchy results, but it's best for 1.5 or even one inch. One inch for newer flyers, if you're new to a really fast airplane, it's better to fly just a little bit nose heavier first couple of times. So that's where the center of gravity is. Now the last thing to do is our control throws. The last thing we do is we need to check our control throws and stuff. For this, I highly actually recommend using the throw gauge that's coming in the kit. So basically you have a high and low, for the ailerons and the rudder, I'd go with a high, or you can even go with more. I'm actually not gonna really do anything to them because I can fly squarely like that. But for you guys, you definitely wanna use them. Now, the most important thing on this airplane that I found out real early when the prototype testing came along is this is really, 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 really touchy. So definitely use some Expo and definitely dial this thing down. So to do that, first I'm gonna go ahead and do my um, endpoint adjustment. It's channel three on this radio. So I'm actually gonna reduce the travel. I'm just gonna set it to the high side. That's about as much as you'll ever really need in this airplane. And if you guys are wondering how much Expo I usually fly with this plane, I use about 30% Expo on the elevator surface. I'll use some on the ailerons and rudder, about probably 20 to 10%, not a whole lot. It's just really on the elevators where you're gonna find the most trouble will come from, especially if you're flying tail heavy. 
So if you guys still need expo, there's actually a graph on this radio that shows you what it is. And basically that means you're it's your deflection. So you can kind of see this bar moving. Right now it's moving in a linear state. So when it's going from 0 to 100, it moves completely in a flat curve. But that's okay for most people, but for a really fast airplane, you want a little bit of like softer movements in the center and then more outrageous towards the ends of the stick movement. So to do this, I'm simply just going to increase this number. And you can kind of see it right there, how it moves like that. And you can watch it on the tail too, because it makes my adjustments super fine in the, in the center, and then when I move close to the end, it goes a lot more. So that's basically in a nutshell what Expo is. So once you've set that up, you're pretty much ready to fly. So let's go fly. So we're all done with the build now, and now it's time to maiden. But I have Josh here with the Corsair, or the P-51. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna fly together, because you know, flying together is a lot more fun. It's better to do that. But if you guys wanna see the build video for the P-51, be sure to check out the link below. And also, if you guys are new to maidening, check out our video on quick, six quick tips to success. It's a tongue twister, isn't it? It's is a tongue twister, it sure is. <laughs> It'll but help yeah. you keep you from crashing. Mm -hmm. That's right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and fly these things. Put in the air. You first. All right. All right. Well, that's not eventful. Yeah, <laughs> it's a windy day today. I'm always worried about the turbulence. Yep. The funny thing is, this is actually the best flying one right, right out of my, right, right out of the box that I've ever built. It, usually, our final versions are the versions we're doing the build video with. You ever yep. notice that? Yeah, definitely. Now these can fly off a two cell or a three cell with a 2204 motor, right? Uh, yeah. Let's get up close together. Yeah, mine's trimmed in, not a click of yeah, trim. Yeah, I haven't really touched my trims at all either. Well, this is the best one so far. <laughs> now, what do you think this would be? Uh, this is intermediate, don't you think? Um, intermediate, I say. As far as the flyer goes, yeah, intermediate to advanced. Building style, I think yours is a lot easier to build. <laughs> <laughs> that wind. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> nice. It does not like that turbulence over the roof. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go for a low. I'm All right. Gonna go. All right, inverted. Inverted too. The roll rate's yeah. ridiculous on this thing. Yep, yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, for you guys wanting to wanting to build and fly these things, I highly recommend putting some expo in there. I normally don't really do expo for most of my normal airplanes, but this guy's so fast and so small and touchy, it's best to run yeah. some and some dual rates. Yeah, especially if you're flying low to the ground. Yeah, if you want speed, it's best to run some expo. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> these are really perfectly matched. Yep. Switch there, go and just land these things. Deal. All right, I gotta paint you. this. <laughs> yep, I gotta paint mine too. We just did a whole video on painting planes. I'm still flying white planes. There we are. <laughs> Friends, I wanna thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. If you haven't already, check out the plans below. Of course, there's gonna be speedboat kits available as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, see you next time. Yep.